I tear her tattered ensign down, long has it waved on high, and many an eye has danced to see that banner in the sky. Beneath it rung the battle shout, and burst the cannon's roar, the meteor of the ocean air shall sweep the clouds no more. The War of 1812, or better known as the Second War of Independence from Britain, welcomed an era of peaceful relations and trade with the United States. The war itself was fought in three theaters, the Atlantic Ocean, the Great Lakes, and the Southern States. The great amount of victories in the Atlantic theater is due mostly in part to a ship many have come to know today as Old Ironsides. Old Ironsides, more properly named as USS Constitution, is a three-masted heavy frigate of the United States Navy. George Washington named it personally after the Constitution of the United States, and it is now the world's oldest floating commissioned naval vessel. By the Naval Act of 1794, the Constitution was one of six original frigates designed to be the Navy's capital ships. Because of this, the six frigates were built larger and more heavily armed than other frigates from that period. Captain Isaac Hull took command of the Constitution in June of 1810 and would captain the ship through most of the War of 1812. One of the Constitution's most famed engagements of the War of 1812 was its battle with the HMS Gurrier. As soon as the Gurrier came into range at about 250 yards away, they started opening fire. Hull told the crew to hold their fire. The Gurrier came to 175 yards, but the Constitution held its fire. When the Garrier was only 25 yards away from the Constitution, Hull ordered a full double-loaded broadside into the Garrier, collapsing its foremast and soon after the mainmast. Over the course of the engagement, the Constitution remained largely intact. To the enemy's astonishment, many of their shots rebounded harmlessly off the Constitution's hull. A sailor reportedly exclaimed, Huzzah! Her sides are made of iron! After their return to port on the 30th of August, the sailors found out that their victory had spread quickly and they were hailed as heroes. The Constitution was also given the nickname of Old Ironside. Another of the Constitution's engagements was with the HMS Java, a ship similar in class to the Guerrier. For this battle, the captain of the Constitution was William Bainbridge, who became captain on the 8th of September. The battle was quick and brutal, with the Constitution's helm being blown to pieces and the Java left in an unmanageable hulk that was deemed too damaged to salvage. Bainbridge ordered the Java to be burned except for the helm, which they would then install on the Constitution. One of the last engagements of Old Ironsides was with the HMS Cyan and Levant. Although the Constitution was outnumbered, she managed to destroy both the Cyan and the Levant, one right after the other. Old Ironside stayed true to her name, leaving the battle unscathed. But it was later discovered that there were a dozen 32-pound British cannonballs embedded in her hull, none of which penetrated through. After the war, Old Ironsides was put in ordinary at Boston Harbor. When the Constitution was built, most ships were expected to have a lifespan of up to 15 years, but the Constitution was not 31 years old. On September 14, 1830, a news article appeared in the Boston Advertiser that claimed the Navy was going to scrap the Constitution. Two days later, the poem Old Ironsides by Oliver Wendell Holmes sprang efforts to quote, save her from the scrapyard. Today, the Constitution is docked at the Charlestown Navy Yard, serving not only as a commissioned vessel, but also as a museum and learning center for the Navy. The ship is crewed by about 60 men and women and is considered an honor in the Navy. The Constitution is currently being remodeled and refurbished so that it may sail on its own power on the bicentennial of the War of 1812 in 2012.
we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution of the United States of America.